Uh, I'm ready. You guys ready? Ready. Hey everybody, uh, this is Chad Jordan, Director of Marketing at Sport Clips. So this is another edition of our Hall of Fame podcast. Uh, for those watching us on YouTube, hello. You can see we've got a pretty full room here uh, in lovely Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Home of the Steelers. Ooh, I've got yeah. some Steelers gear while I'm Sega here that, that I'm supposed to burn when I get home, but uh, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, and uh, one of the main reasons I came this week was for this opportunity and to have a meet and greet with uh, PA 108, which is a store in Washington Township. Is that right? Washington, Washington Pennsylvania. Washington, Pennsylvania. Uh, that, uh, I don't know, just so happened to win the biggest trophy uh, of the year from Sport Clips, and we call that our Logan Trophy. So uh, we're going to, uh, yeah, you can, if you're watching on the podcast, you can see it, I believe, in the background. Is it over here? Yeah. yeah. Is that it? Okay. Uh, so if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, so we thought, all right, uh, they won. They did some pretty cool things. They, they discovered uh, kind of the secret sauce. Why not uh, bottle that sauce up and share it with the rest of the country and Canada and share some of the insights of what went right in this very magical year of 2018 uh, for which they won. So we've got uh, the VIPs from the store, a couple of them anyways, including their manager, uh, the team leaders, and we want to pick their brains a little bit. So. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to have the manager introduce herself, and she's going to lean into this microphone right over here <laughs> as much as she can uh, and uh, let us know who she is. Uh, why don't you tell me uh, your name, uh, obviously you're the manager, how long you've been with Sport Clips, how, you, how long you've been maybe at this store, kind of that relevant information for me. Uh, my name is Nina, and um, yes, I'm the manager of the Washington PA location. I've been with Sport Clips for uh, going on seven years, but um, I actually originally started as a manager at this location, but then managed a different location that my owner has, and then went back up to Trinity about almost four years ago now. So um, it's been a ride, and uh, it turned out how, for the how best. Long, how long have you been cutting hair? Oh my goodness, I've been cutting hair for almost 21 years. 21, they let you cut at yeah. nine years of age yeah. to start cutting hair. They, that's dangerous to give scissors to a nine year old. Yeah. But yeah. I, I don't know how they do it in Pennsylvania. But, uh, it seems pretty pretty reckless to me. But All right, so you know you know what you're doing for sure. I do. All right, that might factor into uh, some of the things that we're gonna learn later. All right, so uh, you called him, you said boss, but I'm gonna call him team leader. Yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll start because I think the real boss is to his right. You're so, right. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk to him first. All right, sir. Uh, in as um, a well-behaved a manner as you possibly can, <laughs> please, please let pressure, us know pressure. who you are and what the heck you're doing here. All right. My name is Jeff Crummy. I am the one of the team leaders here, along with my wife Sherry, who will speak in a little bit. Uh, we originally signed on with Sport Clips in April of 2008. And a little funny story, uh, two months after we signed our deal and bought our first three licenses, the stock market tanked. Oh, 2008, of 2008. course, yeah, the recession. Yes, yeah. and, uh, and Sherry and I looked yeah. at each other and said, what the <laughs> heck did we just do? Yeah. We called our area developer, uh, Eric and Rosemary Gozier, mm -hmm. and we kind of almost said, can we get our money back? <laughs> and they said, no. Uh, but they said, no, just trust us. Yeah. Just trust us with this. Write it out. And uh, the following year, in 2009, we ended up opening two stores, PA 105 and PA 108. Hmm. We now have five stores in the market. And this past year, uh, we have the Chairman's Platinum store at PA 108, and three of our other stores made President's Circle. Amazing. So, yeah. Oh, that, that is great. Okay, we're, we're going to get back uh, in a little bit to your background. I want to find out, you know, how you came to Sport Clips and all that kind of stuff. And the the ill-fated 2008, but how you were able to make it work. So I, I want to pick your brains a little bit on that. So, okay, and your boss, uh, <laughs> let's let's bring her on. Hi, I'm Sherry Ducarm, Jeff, uh, Jeff Crummy's wife and uh, partner in the Sport Clips business for sure. And the only thing I'd add to 2008, the stock market crashing and 
you know, the panic we felt for a few months was we really did find sport clips and we looked for many years at franchises mm -hmm. as what we believe to be recession proof business. Okay. Everyone needs to get their hair cut. Yep. You know, if they're having financial issues, they might not get a cut every four weeks, maybe every five or six, mm -hmm. but everybody needs to get their hair cut. And quite frankly, it has certainly turned out to be that. It is recession. It totally justified uh, your uh, your thinking, your position, and I mean, <laughs> the irony being, you you went into it because it was recession proof, not hoping there would be a recession. Right. But, but there was. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it there proved was. Uh, to be, and, and then uh, Eric uh, and Rosemary. Oh, did, every time they see you, did they just say, "Was it a big I told you so" moment? Uh, no, not really. Okay. No, they just smile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They just kind of smile. So you know that message is yeah, there. Yeah, uh huh. It's 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 underlined. Uh, so let's let's get to. Uh, so you got five locations. You've now what was you were you also at one hundred and five or where? Yeah, else? 105. Okay, so you were at one hundred and five and one hundred and eight. Uh, one hundred and eight this past year, and uh, previously had one hundred and eight kind of been on a, a really big trajectory, or had you seen a, a big leap? Um, and you've been there four years straight now. Uh, had, had you kind of seen it trending upwards previously? Well, it's that's a good story because um, when I was hired on, I was I was hired on as a manager, but every time I've been moved, it was to take over a manager that got demoted. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, he put me in there to kind of make things better, and I think I did. I think I did that at 105 too. Same thing happened again in 108. He put me back up there and. Um, you know, it, it, at first it's kind of a struggle to get things the way you want it when there was a previous manager. But then we were on a roll, you know, an, an upturn, you know, after we got through the couple bumps in the road, and it was it's just up from there. This yeah. is this is pretty. I, I want to pause here because uh, it, we'll talk more about the, the Logan Trophy and, and all that kind of stuff. But there's probably you know a big part of our listening audience. Are either stylist or managers specifically in the sport clips world and they're probably now sitting on the edge of their seat wondering well wait wait okay how did you step into a store where there had been either you know some turnover issues or drama or whatever how did you get things settled to the point where you could be positioned for success so um, and we, we talked about this off air you're a mother of a college student, so yes. you definitely know how to handle your business and, and, and set boundaries and discipline and, and uh, be organized and, and well-maintained and all that kind of stuff. Uh, is it your role as a mother that, that trained you to be able to handle these stressful situations, <laughs> or what exactly uh, led to your success in being able to turn these kinds of stores around? I think, I think that's the majority of it. I, I was always a single mom. I, you know, I still am. I have my son young. And uh, I, I was always driven because I had to be. So mm -hmm. I, I was always, you know, wanting to make money and wanting to be better and yeah. working, working, working. I mean, I've always been a hard worker since I started working. Mm -hmm. So that ethic really just, you know, it snowballed into any job I had. Yeah. Although, really, I've only had two like job long long-term jobs mm -hmm. and they were doing hair mm -hmm. and um, I think that is something that I can show other people I you know I tried to teach my son a good work ethic as well and yes it's it's more of a, a drive for me to be so sh shout out to Nina and all the other single moms and the, you are like a, uh, a living testimony uh, your son is what year in college is he? he? He's just finishing up his junior year. Okay, his junior year. What's he studying to be? Do, Psychology. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. he, he could he could work at a sport clips. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. You know, that's that's half of your job. Yes. Um, yes, it is. So, <clears throat> for the single moms out there that are listening, it's worth it. Yes. Keep going. Uh, what, what else? What else would you say to the single moms who are wondering, they're struggling right now, or they're trying to figure out how they're going to make ends meet, or, or make it through another, uh, another day, another week? Uh, I, yeah, you've been there. So I can't tell you how many times I I remember saying to myself, like I don't know how we're going to do this, mm -hmm. but in the end, it just worked out. Yeah, and I, you know, you just got to keep. You can't give up. You just can't. You just got to keep pushing forward. Yeah. And I. 
you know, like I said, I've just, I think hard work really pays off. And so if, if, there, if there's any message, that is a huge one. And I believe that. Well, in the, uh, the, the movie they're going to make on your life, <laughs> uh, I want to make sure that this podcast is part of it because this will be like, as the credits get ready to roll, this right. will be the one of the crowning moments. Maybe I don't know, maybe your son's graduation from college. That will be yeah, like, well, yeah, right. everybody's crying at the end of the movie. Uh, but no, that, that, that's amazing. Uh, can, you, can you talk to me about, and we'll, we'll get to the Logan Trophy stuff here, I promise. But uh, the role, so how long have you known uh, Jeff and Sherry? I came to Jeff and Sherry, uh, my son and I actually relocated to Las Vegas mm -hmm. and I moved back to Pennsylvania in um, 2013. Yeah. Uh, okay. So and I came right. I had I had previous manager experience. At I, a sport at sport clips at, or no? Okay. At a competitor. Uh -huh. uh, I but have been cutting hair though for yeah. uh, over ten years. So you know I had the experience and I there just happened to be this. I didn't know what I was going to do. Like I came. I actually went back to college to do something completely different. And then mm -hmm. when I moved back here, I couldn't find a job. And there was this ad for a manager. I'm like. I know I can do that. Yeah. So I, I apply, I meet with Jeff, and, and um, he hired me right on as a manager. So since 2013. Had there been a worry that, wait, am I going to be able to make enough money as a, doing this? Is that why you know, maybe you were looking to do something else? No, actually, I went back to, I went back to college like later in life. And mm -hmm. I, because I wanted to just, I realized how many things I missed out on because I was always working weekends and nights doing uh -huh. hair. It's like, like with my son, and yeah. I was like, I'm gonna work this nine to five job. And it's mm -hmm. like great, and then I did all of that, and I got a degree, and it they that didn't pay any money. Mm -hmm. So, and I was like, I know I'm good at doing hair. I'm great at doing hair. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do that. And then I just uh, cutting men's hair had always been a favorite thing of my, like my most favorite thing to do. Yeah. And it's funny because I remember my mother telling me, Hey, Nina, this this. Uh, company called Sport Clips is opening. Whoa, 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 did she say Sport Clips or Sports Honestly, Clips? Honestly, we're just going to go with Sport Clips. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay. We don't want to throw under the bus. All right, so they're hiring. Yeah, yeah it, to get me to like move back. And you should come and work for them. They're, they're opening one up, and that was the Pleasant Hill store. My mom at that time, it was, uh, is it 112? 114. Yeah. I'm sorry, 114. And uh, it was down the street from my mother's house. Oh, and, wow. Just come back and, and work there. You're so great at cutting men's hair. And it's crazy. And then I, I did, and yeah. then I and I got hired on, and it, it it all worked out. I would never go back to cutting any hair but men's hair, mm -hmm. and I honestly regret doing that whole college thing. Mm -hmm. Well, it, but hey, you know, I'm sure there was a purpose behind you it. Have to but know. here's the real question: Is your mom still with us? Or yes. Okay, you want to give her a shout out and thank her, or should we have <laughs> Jeff and Sherry <laughs> yes. to give a shout out to your mom? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely a shout out. But both of my parents, though, really, okay, they, but but she, yeah, she led me here. Mm -hmm. Mom, Mary, thank you. Uh, <laughs> the so, best. Yeah. Well, you have a son, so you know. I mean, I. Hopefully he settles near you and doesn't move to the other side of the country or anything like that. <laughs> My heart. I know. See, yes, so like now I know. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So now, yeah, your mom had uh, ulterior motives, obviously. She did. Uh, let me ask Jeff and Sherry. I don't. I, I, one of you comment on this. Like, when you do you who interviewed? Uh, okay. Jeff. Do you you remember that day, or oh. was she one of you know thousands that you've interviewed <laughs> since two thousand and eight? Uh, describe to me kind of what that was like. So when we started in Sport Clips and opened our first two stores, uh, Sherry was working full time. Mm -hmm. what, what are you guys' backgrounds in terms of so career? My background is in information technology and management consulting, mm -hmm. and then I did some motivation. I fell asleep just listening <laughs> to you describe <laughs> Motivation. Well, wait, then the second one is, okay. then I got into motivational speaking okay. and career coaching. I'd go all into right. high schools and middle okay. schools okay. and okay. coach kids on finding careers uh, and all right. things all right. like that. Mm -hmm. So, and then Sport Clips came along, and I shifted and basically did this full-time. And she, and she was still working. She was still okay. working full-time uh -huh. and was the She's advisory. She's the breadwinner. She was the yeah, advisory. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, all right, so, gotcha. But, uh, so I had interviewed for the first two stores, manager, stylist. I did all the interviewing. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> a few years later, when the manager didn't work out at the Trinity store, the PA-108 store, placed the ad, Nina applied. I... If I remember correctly, I might have interviewed maybe two people. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I interviewed her, I offered her the job on the spot. Mm -hmm. 
And I will never forget the night that I introduced her to the team. We had an existing manager in there, and I walked okay. in oh boy. at 8 o'clock. I like where this is going. <laughs> called the existing manager into the back, and I said, it's not working out. Okay. You're no longer a manager. Oh boy. Okay, fine. And, oh, by the way, yes, we're having a team meeting tonight. That's why everyone's here, because I'm going to introduce the new manager. Mm -hmm. She's here already. And in came Nina. Nina, did you know all this was about he to go down? He did never tell oh, okay. me. Okay, all right. Was that was not it. part of the deal. No, I walk in and didn't even know. Like they, they didn't know that uh -huh. our manager was being demoted. Oh, okay. And that yeah. the manager, the ex manager, was going to Still be there. Still work there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. We we offered her a position. Okay. And so she came in. The rest of the meeting lasted about ten minutes. You know, Nina gave her background and everything, and everyone was in a state of shock. And we walked out. And everyone else left, and she went, "Wow, I didn't know that was going to happen tonight." But she, she, she said, it. "Can I move back to Vegas?" Yeah. So it's too late. She, it went off without a hitch. I mean, she okay. just boom, she just did it. And you know, well, because I guess it, you got the hard part out of the way. No, 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 right. no pun intended with the haircut, <laughs> but uh, like you went ahead. And you did it. It's like ripping a bandaid off. Yes, exactly. And then you know the the floor was cleared, and you walked right in. Yep. Uh, how so? How did how did that transition go for you when you stepped in? Uh, well, the first day, I'll never forget that first day because I didn't know she was she was very angry about yeah. about the whole the way thing. Things went down. Okay, and she uh, was came in for a scheduled shift and then stayed for about 20 minutes and walked out. Uh -huh. So I remember our now area manager Christina was with me and said, well, I guess you know what you're working the rest of the week. <laughs> so I just like took her shifts over for the rest of the week and um, it took time. I just, I remember taking time, but, but you have to get to know everybody and their personalities. And then me, you know, I remember like just sitting down with each of them and talking with them initially and we just kind of rolled with. Keep keep going there because uh, you you had to hit the the ground running. Right. Plus, as I as a manager and, and mm -hmm. a very I mean some some managers as you know they come from you know they were stylists first and then a key holder and then that. so 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 tell me about that. That was prob that was the hardest part because I was still learning the sport clips way and mm -hmm. doing things like. I wasn't even sure of how to do the five point play, right. and I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be managing these people. So I took, and I just, I got a hand. I'm, a, I feel as though I'm a quick learner, mm -hmm. but I, as soon as I got a handle on that, it's only then could I start, like, keeping track of performance stat sheets and you know, five point play things like that. It was that wasn't even on my radar. It was more of okay, I'm gonna, I, I need to get to know what these people are about. Mm -hmm. And then and care for them as yeah, people, right? right? Figure out where went wrong. What 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 were they unhappy with? You know what had been going on in the store that was wrong or right, and and get a feel for everything before I could really start doing like my managerial job. Are, are there any personality types that you found harder, more challenging to deal with than others? Definitely, and uh, actually, Jeff uh, he gave us a book to read called Situational Leadership, mm -hmm. which I think is really helpful. There's things to know about. Tell me a little bit more about what, what is You have to know what personality you're dealing with as to what management style you're going to give mm -hmm. that individual stylist. Mm -hmm. And that is a real thing. You know, you can't, you know, and, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm you know, I've learned this along the way. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's true, you have to really know your team, you have to know your team, your team members like individually. It's not one size fits all yeah, manager Exactly. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not cookies. No. That are just been cut that, out. And you that's, to... that's, that's key. That's a big part of it, I think. That sounds like a book a motivational speaker would give somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Situational leadership. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Though it was, it was a good thing. Yeah. So you, uh, you hit the ground running, you start learning the five point play on the fly, Managing this team, seeing how long before you felt comfortable? Uh, gosh, I mean, I you're like yesterday, a week ago. I mean, it was like the cutting. Uh, well, I was waiting to hear this answer. <laughs> the cut. I mean, as far as getting to know the sport clips ways, just of doing just things. being comfortable in your role, manager yeah, at took, sport clips. Yeah, a few. I would say a few months. Okay. I would say maybe three months max. At, at any point, did you were you like you know what I I don't think this is gonna work out. No. They're not listening. It's it, just you and me. No, <laughs> well, 
Well, they know. We we went through. You've heard, you know, people say um, there's bad apples. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We had we after being there realized that we had mostly bad apples. Oh, okay. And that <laughs> you needed to prune the tree a little bit. And oh, actually, okay. they they got rid of themselves yeah. kind of because they didn't like that there was I was a conflict implementing of personality roles. Personality styles, yeah. And yeah. the old manager didn't have any roles, mm -hmm. and so some people just left, and then other people, you know, once I started to implement things they didn't like, um, it kind of worked out better that way because then I could hire on who I thought would be a good fit, and that's another thing. No, and okay, I, good, I think yeah. you need to hire on for personality, and that is... I, what, more, more than capability? You right. feel like you could train somebody I personally, to be a good... I'll know right away, like, mm -hmm. I, during our training period, and that's what a probationary period is about, but, I, you know, I think if you have it, you have it, mm -hmm. cutting hair. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I can teach you anything. Mm -hmm. But you can't force somebody to have this personality, which made our store, which is a big part of this guy. Yeah. And that is that's that's it. That's the that's the secret. So yeah. then it it gave me the opportunity to. I talk with my I'm Italian. You okay? I keep, keep going. Um, I you know it gave me the opportunity to hire, who I thought were was going to be a good fit for the team. Mm -hmm. And then you know. Sounds like an Avengers movie. Like you're just uh, assembling <laughs> talent, and you know this person has this power, and this one. Does, it's and they all come together and. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Eventually, it did. It really did. You know, the team that really stuck in there and have been with us for years um they they've seen it all and they've been there and they're you know they 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 just know they know it's the hard times are only temporary and that they know that there's more reward is the outcome it's mm -hmm. more of a, of a good thing at, at the end mm -hmm. so yeah there was a time when there were four, four of you that's what i was thinking of. and Four, like four, that's the four whole total. team. That was the team. That's not the core. Four. That's no, no, the that four. Was, there were four of them. Wow. And some of the. Yeah, there's eight stations, you know. Yes. So, I mean, well, what are you, cutting hair with one? We closed, hand we closed half the store. Okay, all right. Yeah, no. yeah. But some of the bad apples, to use Lena's term, mm. realized after they left, uh oh, I made a mistake. Mm. I had a good thing going mm. here. And they called and wanted to come back. And Nina would ask the other three remaining team members, hey, do you want to bring back Susie? And they went, no. Mm -hmm. Do Is not really bring that Susie back. Susie that we need to edit no. this name? No. Okay, okay. all right. <laughs> no, no, just make sure. no, no. The names have been changed okay, to protect right. the guilty. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, they would say, for that, again, that personality, no, mm -hmm. no, no, Susie doesn't get We'd rather work our oh, fingers to the bones. That. They said that. We'd and rather work yeah. and hope to close yeah. than, than have day. Susie come in and mm -hmm. work with her again. We don't mm -hmm. want her back in the store. So, no. So you, uh, I'm loving all this, by the way, because you are, what you're doing is you're revealing these secrets that you promised you wouldn't have because you want to win next year. <laughs> I knew I'd get them out of you. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so you, you become comfortable in, in your managerial style. You get the situational leadership book. You, now you're hiring for personality. Uh, and when do you start to see, because this is now what, 2015-ish? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When do you start to, and, and has the store always been off the hook, clients coming out of the woodwork, or was it when you had to get to your house in order first, oh, yeah. and then the clients oh, yeah. start there coming were, back? The clients were, I remember in the beginning, our net, our sales, uh, average weekly sales, it was probably only um, seven or 8,000, mm -hmm. you know, now. Which, for some stores listening to that are like, oh, great, and, and you're saying, well, no, that, that's, not, that's not good for what we needed. Well, um, well, yeah, I mean, right. I'm not downplaying that at all. I but just, you knew there was a potential for much more. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Then I start, you know, I started to understand how it works around here. And, um, you know, I, I, it grew. The clients grew. Everything grew. The staff mm -hmm. grew. And then, I mean, now we're averaging about, you know, 16, 17. Yeah, I saw your performance board. I mean, it was, it was impressive. I think you had a two in front of one of the digits. And I think... Year. I think one of the impressive. challenges in the early days, quite frankly, was that the Sport Clips brand was not very well known in this market. Yeah. And, and now it's got, what, like 40 stores or whatever, something, you know, around 35, 40 stores yeah. in the so, market. So we're, we're in a great started. center. You mm -hmm. saw our center. Yeah. Huge amount of traffic on a daily basis, but nobody really knew Sport Clips, mm -hmm. so they were not inclined to just open the door and come in. Yeah. So it took some time to build the brand. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And with the social media, too, in you know, with 
with clients and stylists, they go on there and see that everyone's having this great time, winning mm -hmm. all this stuff. Then the clients, if they're, a lot of ours travel or they're from out of town for working, for work, and they will just Google it and they'll see, they'll see all of our reviews and yep. they'll be like, oh, this is the place I'm going, mm -hmm. you know, so. You know, it's almost like someone told you to say that from the oh. social media team. I don't, I, I don't know. Actually, I did was. not. <laughs> this, I'm just, I'm just saying, I did not tell her to say that, but thank you. Yes, you're yeah. right. That does help. So yeah, as, like as, a, as an example, before you came today in the store, mm -hmm. client walks in, makes a beeline for the bathroom, which is all the way yeah. to the back of the store, comes back out, sits down, stylist calls his name, yeah. she takes him back, and about two minutes later, she's walking him back up. And he goes, mm -hmm. I didn't know that Morgan was here today. Mm -hmm. I would really prefer Morgan. Mm -hmm. She's like, okay, no problem. Well, we're sitting in the lobby. Right. You know, Nina's in the store getting ready for your visit, yeah. and he's like, she didn't do anything wrong. Right. She did nothing wrong. And it was a big joke. And yeah. everyone started joking around mm -hmm. with him. And other clients got in on it. They're like, oh, yeah, we don't want her. Uh -huh. No, no, she didn't do anything wrong. That's the environment up there. Yeah, That's the, yeah it's like that all the time. Yeah. It's like the it's like, it's like the barber shop. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I can a feel lot like of he, times. That, guy, that client, yeah. after we recorded our video today, our fun video, he made sure to make a point of like, they, they the reason, because I was saying, what are the secrets? Why is this store winning? And he said, it's these girls right here. Yeah. And he was talking about how amazing they are. And like, he perf he's got her faithful. Is it Morgan? Is that her right, name? Yeah. Or, you know? mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it seems like everybody has, even the clients, yes. have a great time. Yes. yes. I mean, that's, there are times that all the clients and, and we're all engaged in conversation, all, all on the floor, once while cutting. Mm -hmm. And it's fun. You know, and they, I think they come for the experience, but that my team, they all have great personalities and they're, yeah, they're super nice. They have outstanding customer service. Yeah. They mm -hmm. really, really do. So that's what they come for. Mm -hmm. It feels like uh, it's the, <clears throat> almost the Chick-fil-A model where <laughs> they don't teach people, they don't teach employees, team members to be friendly. They hire friendly people right. and then teach them how to. So right. chicken, you know, yeah. chicken sandwiches. Yeah. And it feels like that's kind of the model that you guys are really incorporating yeah. as well. So, uh, so what happened? What you know, what happened in 2018 where all the stars aligned together? And I don't even know them to be honest. I, this I'm, I'm a knucklehead. I don't even know the metrics that go in to the Logan Trophy. I, I mean, it's a. I was told there'd be no math on this podcast, so <laughs> I don't know the, right. how the numbers crunch and all that kind of. Do, do one of you know kind of the, 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 the algorithm, of the I, way it I works? I don't know the algorithm. All I know is the numbers they put up at the yeah. the winning screen and all the mm -hmm. categories and all that, but there's that number on the bottom. Mm -hmm. The points at the bottom, I, I you know. know it's I like know. weighted somehow. <clears throat> some, or, some way, yeah. somehow, yes. Uh, so you guys, <laughs> it, uh, when did you start to get an inkling that you might be uh, in the running and maybe if you made a key push to a certain month so uh, I'm not trying to lead you anywhere but well I, that's a good yes okay. that's that's yeah. all right so at the end of each quarter okay we receive the list the Logan ranking list mm -hmm. that ranks all the stores one through whatever and I look at them at the end of every quarter I don't know where we were at the end of quarter one last year I don't know where we were at the end of quarter two last year. I think we were probably in the top 10, but I don't remember. Sherry and I were away at the end of the third quarter, and EJ Gozier, mm -hmm. our area developer, sends me a text, hey, congratulations, buddy. I'm like, what, what did I do? Yeah. I'm out of town, what, what yeah. did I do? He said, oh, you didn't see, you're in second place for the Logan Trophy. I said, how do you know that? He said, well, the rankings just came out. Well, I'm out of town. I didn't look. Well, I'm immediately, yeah. I don't know where, I think we were at the dinner or something. I'm on and I pull it up. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, we are in second place. So when I got back home, I did some ciphering. Mm -hmm. And I looked at each category and I saw where the number one team was ranked in each category. I saw where we were ranked in each category. Okay. The number one team at the end of the third quarter was the number one store in two of the categories. Okay. They were first place, mm -hmm. one and one. We weren't first place in anything, I don't think. Maybe, not even backward, no, I don't think. Okay, but you weren't low in anything. No, either, we weren't so low in anything. Yeah, okay. We were 40 points behind mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the score. So their total score was 300, our total score was 340. So I met with Nina, 
And she gets all excited. I said, so, okay, we're now all excited. Sherry's all excited. Have you we're ever, excited. ever been in the top ten that you had known Not of? Not that I had known I mean, That's why I said year, at the end of the other. even in previous years? Oh, previous years. years okay. Oh. And I told Gordon this on the stage. When I won the trophy, I said, Gordon, I've sat at this banquet for now 11 years. And every time it would come to the Logan Trophy, I would just want to get up and leave. Mm -hmm. Because I knew there was no snowball's chance in mm -hmm. hell that we were ever, ever even going to be considered for this damn yeah. thing. He said, well, here you are. Right. <laughs> so, so, no, I never considered it. Okay. So we, now we get running. excited. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we got, we're going to win this. How do we win this? And I said, we've got to get the team excited about it. Mm -hmm. So how do so we do that? was do like the that? last quarter, though, right? Well, yeah. So, yeah. The, so, so this is in <clears throat> October. We're in sometime. October yeah. now. Sometime in October, we had a team meeting. And I went in and motivationally said yeah, to the guys, of here's <laughs> what you have to understand. Better that than IT. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I didn't even with like, my computer and yeah, a, yeah, a, yeah, a, right. you know, and a, and a slide. Uh, you know, like like this guy had trained. There was some guy uh, chat, yeah, right, yeah, like chat like or something, this, yeah, yeah, clicking slides mm -hmm, and stuff. No, it wasn't yeah. like that. So I explained to them. I said, okay, guys, you know, we live in the city of champions where we've got trophies. You were familiar with the Lombardi Trophy when you win all those mm -hmm. Super Bowls and the Stanley yeah, Cup. Yeah. And I said, the Logan Trophy is the equivalent. That's the Sport Clips Stanley Cup. Yeah. And they're like, oh, mm -hmm. wow, this is cool. I said, no, really, you, you need to understand, this is like a really big thing. 1,900 stores, and we're, we yeah. could be number one. So I went down through each of the rankings, and I said, this is where we're short. Here's where they're higher. I said, now, here's some good news. In the two categories where they're number one, they only have one way to go. Yeah. And that's, that's down. Right. Yep. We can go up in everything. Mm -hmm. So the two that we really needed some work on were client count, and sales growth. Okay. Client count growth and, growth and sales growth. So we sat down and we mapped out a strategy for how we could generate more clients, mm -hmm. which would in turn generate more. Please, pray more tell. What, what, what <laughs> did you do? So we looked at the prior couple of months hourly load mm -hmm. and looked to see where our wait times were spiking. Okay. And then also where our walkouts were perhaps yeah. spiking as well. We found that there were probably three or four times during the week that there were these little blocks, like from 11 to 2. Just two hours. Or 1 to 3, mm -hmm. or where it spiked. So we said, what we're going to do is, rather than schedule for that, we're going to create what we call special forces. So special, Nina would special, spe forces? special forces. Okay. So Nina would create her schedule, just uh -huh. like she would, to, as, as the hourly load and everything would say, this is what you need. But we knew that we were going to have these spikes. So we would ask team members if they wanted to be on special forces for that week for these periods of time. And they would raise their hand, say, yes, I would be part <coughs> of the special forces. So, I said, so what we do is, if we saw that from that 11 to 2 time on a Tuesday, that, uh-oh, here comes the client flow. And you can tell because of the uh, wall board. The wait, well, the wall board, yeah, yeah, yeah the wall okay. board. The wait times start going up. Uh -huh, okay. The online check-ins start hitting. Mm -hmm. you know, so you have some mm -hmm. advance notice. You pick up the phone and you call Alyssa and say, Alyssa, Special Forces, we need you. Alyssa would come in. Now, here was the catch. If they came in and worked one hour, I paid them for three. They came in for two hours. Okay. They paid them. They got an extra two hours. Okay. So, so that's why they wanted to be on special uh, forces. So now they're fighting to be on right. special forces. Also, can I just say, not one of my team, well, actually only one of my team members lives near the store. We mm -hmm. all live maybe 30 to... Like An hour. 30. I personally live 30 miles one way. They come on podcasts way. you can listen to. No, I clips. know. Yes. Oh, you're just your commute. Yes, you know? you're right. Uh, but okay, so, so they, yeah, they had to they close. had to be really all in to come well, all like, that way to work an correct. hour. Right, but, exactly. But you're going right. to give them so that was the So yes. we were always giving gotcha. them two extra hours. And I said, even if so let, let's say that you ended up maybe working a whole shift. Mm -hmm. So maybe they came in at eleven but ended up staying until six or seven. Yeah. They still got their extra two hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they might have just added those 
special forces on to the beginning of their shift, mm -hmm. and then just they oh, got it. Correct. They Correct. And then wait. stayed for their shift. Yeah. Either way, they, they got extra money. And now they're all waiting by the phone, hoping to get called <laughs> well, into they, work. Well, no, that's, uh, that's that ended, not yeah, that ended, that that ended, that ended too yeah. far. No, no, no. That ended at the end of December. Oh, okay. It was, it was, yeah. yeah, it was a lot of. It was a lot. I so, mean, they worked really hard. Yeah, I'm. I, I don't have the numbers because I don't have the numbers. But I'm suspecting that in those two areas where we were, we could get, gain yeah, ground. Yeah. We obviously That's gained enough did. ground in those, and then I think we all obviously I think we moved up a lot in the back bar. So now since what we I, won high now what I think is going to happen is team leaders across the country they're going to ignore the first two quarters of the low control <laughs> rankings, <laughs> wait for that third quarter, see if they're in the near the top, and then they're going to just you know go like well, you guys you know, did. There's something to be said for that if you look at like horse racing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, sometimes those horses just yeah, wait, uh -huh. wait till they yeah, round that last yourself. bend and boom, off you go. I love it. Uh, so, here's what I want to do because you guys have been amazing with your time and this is after hours for everybody. I've got, uh, unless you have any, any words of, of pearls of wisdom that you want to drop, uh, I think I've gotten enough out of you guys to uh, uh, hit, you know, stop on this podcast and have it be worth it. But I want to have, I got 10 questions for you. Oh boy. So, uh -oh. um, wow. They're the uh, the bonus questions at the end, um, and I won't I won't be asking follow ups to each of these. Whatever answer you give, I'll just live with. Okay. Um, and you said you didn't have a list of questions. I see. Well, you, you know. Say that. Uh, but these are these are the podcast. So if you've listened to the podcast, you'll know what the ten questions are on your on your long commute. Okay. All right. Number one, uh, the the first question: Which superpower would you most like to have? Mind reading. Oh, this psychology lady over here. Well, yeah, uh -huh. that's not why I said it, okay, but uh -huh. I think it would help out in, at your work, at your job. With, uh, with your team members yes. or with your clients? Okay, your team members. Both. Yeah. At least yeah, she's maybe. a team leader. Uh, yeah. yeah that, well, that's because you're here. So she, uh, Number two, what is your personal motto? My personal motto, on, honestly, the, just work hard, hard work pays off. Mm -hmm. Hard work pays off. Yeah, you're living proof of that. I guess, yeah. Other than where you live now in Las Vegas, where else in the world would you most like to live? In the world? Yeah, you got the whole world. Oh, Italy or Greece, probably. Okay. You ever been? Not yet. It's okay. on. And we're All going. Right. It's it our happen. background. Yeah, make yeah. it happen. So visit. Yes. Just keep living right. here. Right, right, right. Uh, who is a celebrity you'd most like to meet one day? Oh, um, Ellen. Oh yes. I love her. Yes. Every time I get that as an answer, I, re I, I. I tag Ellen in the podcast. I know that, so. I know you wanted some, like I don't have like a um you know I think that she she moves people all kinds of different kind of people in yeah. all different oh, ways of life. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. And you know, game I steal all her games for huddles and all that kind of stuff and yes. I, I love what she yes. does. Uh, which words or phrases do you most overuse? Um, it can be an Italian word too, unless it's a <laughs> curse word or something. Uh, do I overuse? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an answer. I don't think. I don't know. Like I feel like the people that I feel like, I say that a lot. I feel like I feel like I feel like I feel like I feel like. <laughs> I feel like. All right. See, so we knew we'd come across it. it, it I feel like, people, like it's I feel like. I feel like the you people enough. that talk to me like would know. You know, uh -huh. I maybe don't even know that I that I do that. Maybe they'll come up to you after. Oh, that's so my you should have said. My son tells yeah, me all. You should have said truth. this. Yeah. Uh, what sound or noise do you love? Um, I love rain sounds. Okay. I sleep with them. Oh, okay. You don't actually love rain, but you like no, the, yeah, the like white the sounds noise. Of rain. I like okay. the sounds of rain. Okay. What sound or noise do you hate? Construction. Oh, okay. Is there a lot of that here? Mo mostly, yes. Uh -huh. Mostly, uh, like, for example, there was somebody jackhammering in my neighborhood this morning. I think mm -hmm. that woke me up. The I actually went out there to, to see what was going yeah. on. Okay. Give them a little Italian fire. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, what profession other than your own would you have been good at or at least have wanted to try? Well, what I went back to college for mm -hmm. was uh, to be a paralegal. Okay. If I would have chose that like earlier in life, I was always like really interested in the law. I don't mm -hmm. know if I would have went to law school, but I still do like it's the law. something the way a lot of stylists are wired because that and I get a lawyer is, really? is that uh, answer to that quite a bit. Like, like political science was my favorite class in the whole world. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. Okay. What do you consider your greatest achievement? My son, he's, I'm so, I'm, mm -hmm. be, I'm not, I can't be prouder of anything else in the whole world. We got a Logan I trophy right here. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's the second time when you've been talking about your son that you've teared up. I so. just, I, I guess, yeah. unexplainable. What's his name? Anthony. Anthony, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, Anthony, mom's proud of you. Of course I'm proud of this. No, yeah, well, that's just a thing. I can't hear you. <laughs> Anthony's going to be able to hear yeah, this. Yeah. He'll listen to this podcast. Yeah, uh, yeah right. <laughs> number 10. Number 10. If heaven indeed exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Um, you did your best out here. <laughs> You're a good person. I love. All right, that works for me. Yeah. And hopefully it works for you. Yeah. Uh, I think we found out a lot today about what it takes to uh, to win a Logan Trophy. I think probably the number one thing is it takes an amazing manager. So yes. Yes. Uh, I think it starts and ends there and everything in between matters as well. But uh, I think Jeffrey and Sherry would both uh, both agree. Uh, I, always, I always tell her, you got to think of that store like you're baking a cake. Mm. And you the, your team members are the ingredients going in. Mm. And when you bring a new ingredient in, and all of a sudden the batter goes sour, you need to get that ingredient yeah. out. It changes the flavor profile. Changes the flavor. Yeah, yeah. You got to get them out. So yeah, he has the best analogies yeah. all the time. Well, he's a motivational speaker. <laughs> he, he doesn't live in a van no. down by the river either. So, uh, <laughs> Only in the summer. Yeah, so, uh, this, is, uh, this has been a treat. Thank you. I, I actually do think team leaders, managers... Uh, a lot of stores are going to benefit from kind of hearing this, uh, your, your a journey, and who knows, we might be bringing this back to, it might not even leave Pittsburgh, right. who knows, you know? I mean, you've got four other stores, you have this store as well, um, it might be, uh, there's a repeat champion on there already, so we're, we're thinking maybe three times in a row, that'd be the record <laughs> that you want to, yeah, repeat. that you want to aim for. That's what we do here. That's what so. we do, yeah. City of Champions. So, yep. uh, all right, everybody. Hey, uh, thanks to this great team for joining me. It's been another edition, and uh, we hope you can tune in next week. Thanks. Thanks, thanks. Jen. Thank you. All right. Hey, Yay. great job. Great job. Thank great you. job. Good job, guys. Great job.